Hello and welcome to to the final bell brought to you by Panther Tyres. As we are every single week, we appreciate the support of Panther Tyres. Any of our listeners out there who need anything for their cars, please give the guys at Panther Tyres a call. Go and check them out. They'll sort you out. Whatever you need. I think those who've listened in the past realise Stokes has given it the big thumbs up. He had his car uh, all taken care of, did everything. Car's beautiful and clean as well. They, they looked after the two kids while they, uh, they fixed my car. Perfect. Big welcome to Matthew Stokes. Stokesy, hello. Thank you, Lingy. Scotty Gallen's with us as well. Scotland, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you, Cameron. Great you, to be here. You've continued to stick with the hairs. Still got a little bit of length in it. Oh, you know, there's, you know, I've gone hatless today, which is a bit of a risk. Yeah, you've gone the um, straight out of isolation into no hat, slick back. No hat. Sort of the beard's sharp. been trimmed, though. I thought that was positive for you. Mm. Yeah, trying look, to lift the game. You look okay. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> that's a big pass. Yeah, that's a pump up if ever I've heard it. We are going to have Zach Tui, our old oh. mate Scotty, our original podcast member, is going to come and have a chat to us a little bit later on. We promised Diggsy. He's got a few issues. Tony Diggs, who is the man, the producer and co-host with Pat McAfee in the the Pat McAfee show. 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 Thank you. Uh, in America, for those who don't know, he. Uh, Pat discovered AFL footy during the uh, shutdown and fell in love with it. Unfortunately, he ended up a Collingwood supporter. But Diggsy, our man Diggsy, ended up a Cat supporter, promised to come on. He's another late withdrawal, Stokesy. Uh, look, he's Diggs. Out. Diggs. <laughs> My man, our man Diggs. You only get a few chances, all right? <laughs> I know you're about to get married. But sometimes there's something more important <laughs> and our podcast is more important than your wedding. Well, that is the reason he's a very apologetic. He's got an emergency meeting. He's getting <laughs> married next week and given mm. all the restrictions and all the craziness going on in this world and certainly in America. Do what you're told, Diggsy. Do what you're told. Yeah, I think he's just making so, sure he's, he's, smart man. he's, he's towing smart the line. Man. So Diggsy will be back at some stage. Uh, we do want you on, Diggsy. We, we want to have a chat. Um, but we, we will be talking with Reg. So that's your... Um, that's your <laughs> That's your second prize there, having to listen to Reggie Should we talk, talk about how many shots a goal he tries to take each week? Zach Tui. Oh, he's <laughs> hovering around that 50-metre arc like a bad smell now. Yeah, he's, he sniffs them out, doesn't he? Oh, he hasn't hit one yet. No. He's tried. He's not hitting them as long as he used no, to. Well, he won't take this well, this line no, of question. No, we all get old. We all get long. <laughs> <laughs> we will ask him about that. The, the Cats had a good win, 37-point victors over the Gold Coast Suns. First... Third and fourth quarters, excellent, terrific football. Even seemed a bit more bold and brave with their ball use, quite dynamic. They listened to the podcast, Cameron. Second quarter, they didn't listen to the podcast. Well, Slow and stagnant, and lo and behold, the Gold Coast Suns kick a few goals. I think the coach, and he was right, I mean, we all had watched Gold Coast from afar and went, oh, yeah, they look pretty good. But first hand, and we, we, the superstar went off after 13 minutes, Matt Rowe, which... Took the air out of it a little uh, it bit. It was flattening. <laughs> oh, flattening us. Let's not, let's not call him a superstar just yet, though, please. Three best in a row. And the high, the high tuck, you know, you see it in real life. Yeah. It's definitely high. Genuinely high, it's you're right. Genuinely Def- a high Definitely tuck. high. Uh, but he's out too, just a quick recap. Yeah, oh. He's the shoulder injury. They're going to no operate risk, yeah. 12 weeks, done. Absolutely. R- rising star, done. Uh, yeah, well, one betting company paid out already, but uh, you, not, not a smart move. You think? <laughs> well, you're you're a uh, voter, Cameron. Mm-hmm. He potentially could still win if you vote on who's the best player from the year. Yeah. No, it's on the his best. three games would be better than ten of someone else. It's on the best year you've had. You sure, Cameron? It can't be anything to do with what if you think they're going to be the best player eventually. But what is his evidence of three weeks compared to evidence of See, so what happens There's what? your example, Stokes. All you, you got to do is play three good games and Scotty's pumping three up best calling you a superstar, rising yeah, star winner. No, nah, but what happens if he does get nine votes? <laughs> He will get nine brown loads. What, what happens then? Does that mean he still wins the rising Ooh, star? He, I, I was looking forward to seeing him play oh. in person. How about the first free kick, though? Sal clipped him straight away. You <laughs> yeah, can tell. Oh, that was... <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah, you're here, eh, kid? There was no, no accident there. Oh, sorry, all. mate. You're your free kick. No yeah. worries. <laughs> it was his classic Selwood. Uh, was Tommy Hawkins, good. Oh, we've been crying. Poor old Tom. I mean, I've been so frustrated for him. He was magnificent. He was, wasn't he? Clearly best yeah. on ground. He got, he got more mobile, though. So he got up the ground a little bit. The first couple of goals, I reckon, was just losing his opponent, yeah. getting out the back on him. I know he is outstanding when he gets close to goal. 
but occasionally, just to find his way back into some form, it, it's worth letting him loose for a little bit and just letting him run around, up the ground a bit, lose his opponent, work his opponent over to then end up kicking a couple of goals. It doesn't work all the time, but I just reckon when he's out of touch a little bit, Stokesy, yep. let him run around and just be free for a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I think so, the, the delivery to him on the weekend was a lot better. I think when yeah. Mitch Duncan and, and Sam and Agola, um are around that half forward line, being able to you know use their foot skills to be able to put it into space for Hawkey to work off his man. I think that we look so much more dangerous when we have the good kickers going inside our forward fifty instead of the guys who just sort of loop it in there and, and sort of hope. So, you know, having someone like Mitch Duncan who's probably got the best skills, yep. foot skills in the in the competition or close to it, being able to deliver it to our forwards, they're always going to have a chance to be able to to get scores on the. Speaking of forwards, yep. now oh. it wasn't perfect and there were little moments where the confidence was, confidence was still down a touch, but Big Sav oh. just felt like he took Back. a step forward, launching at a couple of those balls and big marks. That was positive. Little sexy uh, <laughs> was great to watch in a week. I mean, you can just see when he does go for those marks and then the confidence, you can see it actually grow in him. You can see it in his eyes, you can see it in his body language, he starts to strut around a little bit like all the big guys do. And can I pose a theory to you with him? Yes. He is, from all reports and all of my interactions with him, um, one of the best teammates you could have and a great bloke. He's almost selfless to a fault. Yep. Because he, is, he seems so conscious of, to, I don't want to get in Tom's way, I, I don't want to be in this way, I've got to be doing this because this is what my team needs and almost ends up trying to care so much about what he's doing to help everyone else that he forgets his number one th- number one strength, and that is the ball goes up in the air, it is your footy, you just launch at it and go for it. And as soon as he cleared his mind of that, he just started clunking them. Absolutely. I think that probably goes more on the hawk. I think when the ball's in the air, hawk, just stay out of his way, mate. Just, you, just, <laughs> you, you just worry about bottling up your man. Let, for let, your own let, safety. Yeah, exactly. Too. Let the big fine Fiji and just go for those marks because it looked spectacular and it was beautiful to watch. What, what were the other positives? Because it was a good win. So Suns, Suns came, second quarter, and then the response after half time. Excellent football. Last week's guest, the Ruckman, D4. Yes. I thought yes. he was, he showed like a, his skill level was, you know, normally Ruckman and Stokes, you'll back me up here. You, yep. You're not expecting too much from the big boys. I don't so expect anything from Ruckman, correct. to be honest. <laughs> but like a one handed mark, a great kick to Tom. Like he's got some. He's got something there, and he competes. Like he's one of these, you know, Shane Mumford sort of tap, but then he'll run, run into the pack and force people out of the way. Like he's got a, I like it. So Max Gorn, Brody Grundy, two best ruckmen oh, yeah. in the competition. They're tall. They do things different. Jared Witts, oh, on early season form, is in that next yeah. bracket of the the top ruckmen in the comp. And two weeks in a row, Darcy's gone up against Gorn mm. and Witts and held his own. That's really positive. Yep, I think so. I think um, I think the confidence of you know probably Reese being out for a few weeks and knowing that he was going to be in there and, and and have the crack at making it his position, I think gives not only Ruckman but all players the confidence to be able to go out there and just play footy. And I think the the team's benefited from that a lot. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna concede something to you too, Stacey. Oh, 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 well, oh. no, I, I, this I, is a rarity. I still stand by my statement of a couple of weeks ago, where I thought it was a risk to play Jack Stephen oh, no, again no, no. because I was. I have to apologise to Matthew too. I, I was worried that if he played another poor game, he would start worrying about it so much, and it actually might have impacted him for a number of weeks. But you're right, Stokes. He actually just playing him and letting him slowly build form. He, he's nowhere near his best form. Absolutely. No. But each week, we're just seeing a fitter, um, more polished, a uh, little bit better touch performance from Jack Stephen. He had 17 disposals on the weekend and bit by bit, getting better and better. So I concede to you, Matthew, as I so often did throughout my career, just always <laughs> deferred to your better judgment. I don't think I've ever heard that. I just like take a moment <laughs> to sit back. You're a bit shocked. I right? mean, yeah, look... So. Oh, so unfair me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Look, I think he's just one of those players that just needs, obviously, where he's come from in the sense of his conditioning, what he's been through probably over the last few years. He just needed time to enjoy footy again. And sometimes that's what you need. You need, you need people to put your arm around someone um, and say it's going to be okay. And it's just a game. Go out there and enjoy yourself. And you can see when he kicked that goal and how much he, the teammates. Yeah. And you can see how Always much. Always got it, around him, didn't You can see how much impact he's had already on our group. 
just by the interactions of when he kicked that goal, how much they, how how they came for him. And I think, I think he's starting to feel like he's a Geelong player now. And I think giving the opportunity, he's going to do better and better as week as week goes on. From afar, Scotty, we we look for any little signs. We're, we're not in the inner sanctum of football clubs. You look for signs of what a person's like, how things mm. are travelling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you guess a lot of the times. Um, those of us in the media, that, that's fair. Oh, isn't well, that's it? good. You're, yeah, you're calling yourself media now. This is well, nice. <laughs> when I think a really good indication is when a player kicks his first goal uh, in his career or a yeah. first goal for a club, um, you get a really good look into whether or not he's a popular person amongst the group. And yeah. sometimes, every now and then, you see one, they kick the goal and one gets to them yeah. and then a few realise, oh, actually, that's his first oh, goal. The but camera's yeah. on us, we better go yeah, over. get over. But that was genuine on the weekend. Jack kicked the goal and they came from everywhere, and it was happiness and excitement, and they were really jumping around him. That's a sign he's, he must be a very popular teammate. No, I agree. I was watching intently, Cameron, on your rule. I agree. <laughs> now, 11 possession games. Normally, from a midfielder, you'd frown upon them, but Brandon Parfitts was the best 11 possession game I've seen. In 10 pack. tackles. And tack- 11 tackles. He had, but he, he had a double-double. He's rapidly – I know we've been on him, but he's rapidly becoming – one of the most important players of this team. When he's in there, it, everything's different. He kicks goals. Kicks he has goals, impact. He's hard. Yep. I just we need his hair back in the yeah. We need braids. we need the braids back. I'll I'll mention that to him. You, you know he's what? He's becoming so important. It's a great call because I watched another game on Sunday, and I watched a midfield group just get junk time possessions and have zero impact and butcher the footy, and they would have all ended up with high twenties, thirty yeah, possessions. I would take um, maybe a couple more than 11 would be well, ideal. You 11, you're potting. But, but, no, but I would take an, a, yep. an 11 to 18 Correct. disposal game from a midfielder. 11 has tackles, two goals. Huge impact as, as opposed to Junk City, 28 touches he's and doing star. nothing and butchering the footy. And Parfit is a high impact. What player. about, talk about highlights, the little man, 350th, didn't have his greatest oh. night. We've seen him far better, but talk about... He setting up a goal. Apparently, Tommy Hawk, he said afterwards, Tom Hawkins spent the last quarter saying, just, just lead to me, I'll get it to you. Because Hawk was you know, having yeah. a night out. He's like, I'll get it. Hawkey's marked the footy, <laughs> and Gaz's flash pass could have given the little handball, and Hawkey just didn't quite react quick enough. Yeah. But you could see Hawk realise, oh, that was Gaz. I should have given it. <laughs> he was kicking it to nobody else on the field <laughs> other than Gaz. And the fact that he actually kicked it from 55, oh, like, I've, yeah. I've, been, I've been training with Gaz for the last year and I haven't seen him kick over 35 <laughs> metres and all of a sudden, in the last quarter of a game, he's kicking... I, I couldn't have... I, I, was so, I was at home with Amelia at the time and I said, no, he won't, mate. He can't make this. <laughs> or he'll do a string and then it's hit, it's hit the... Oh, hit oh, it back flush. Bench. Yeah, I comfortably. Mean, I mean, for the occasion, it was nothing, no better to watch yeah. and see that. I mean, and to watch the celebration... <laughs> How was Jack Henry laughing? Yeah. My 50th game, I get to share the limelight. <laughs> Bugger off, Jack. And they right. kept grabbing and him and saying, no, come back in here. And that's what I love about our club. And that's what I love about Joel Silver and Hawkey. It's not necessarily all about them. It's about what, what mm. it meant. And to have Jack Henry <laughs> play his 50th game <laughs> and uh, being put in the same bracket as those two, it just sums up that it still, it still means something. You've played 50 games for our club, regardless of... The 300th and yep. 350th. Come with us. We'll share this together. I, I, I thought that was a really beautiful moment. I agree. And, and add on the fact of how special that was for Jack Henry. St Mary's Oval is two drop punts away. That's where Jack played all his junior footy. He grew up, uh, what, 10 drop punts away in Newtown. Um, went to every Cats game. Crazy little Cats fan who grew up here basically at this facility, this, this area... And then he got to walk off the ground in his 50th game with the team that he loved with two of the greatest players to ever wear <laughs> ever. a blue and white jumper. You'd have that photo on the wall quickly, oh, wouldn't you? Oh, jeez. I would have Look given at anything to be able to walk off with those two boys. I mean, that, <laughs> and like you said, he's a true blue Geelong boy yeah. um, through and through. Um, but that's what you, you know, when you watch that, that's when you go, Jack, that's what we need you to do. Yeah. We, we need you to be a, a mm. Gary. We need you to be a, a Selzy. And, and that's what I think our legacy and what the legacy of the older players is. You know, we've got Harry, Hawk, Joel and Selzy. Joel and Selzy. Joel and Gary coming to the end of their careers. Pass on to the legacy. That, boys, we need you to take the next next lead. Yep. How Absolutely. about the... We were healing. So we saw what not the cameras got. Like, we got the whole view. The class of the skipper and then Gary. Yeah. Like, Matt Rowell had been the talk of the injured... 
missing for three quarters. Sal went to him before he went to a lot of his teammates. Yeah. He saw the kid and then Gary followed it up. And to paint the picture too, if you, you know, in that situation, if you're sort of crossing paths with an opposition player, yeah. you can realise, oh, actually, he's hurt himself. I'll go take five or six steps and mm. go and do it. Joel walked all the way from nearly off the he's ground. celebrating his own 300th yeah, win, of course. To the bench. Yeah. Raul was still on the bench at that stage. Went and had a chat to him, shook his hand, yeah. wished him all the best. Gary was pretty much gone and off the ground. And for those who know this ground well, the opposition change rooms are on the other side of the ground. The suns are heading towards those, so they're, I don't know, a good 80 metres away at this stage. Gary's run all the way back to Matt Rowell to, to wish him all the best and, and offer, I, I well, believe, said, yeah, support ring me give me a call. I've done you two shoulders, so... I've, no I've, I've called you a few times, Gary. You haven't answered my phone call, so <laughs> good luck, Matty Rowell. But what about Gary? What about had him just a nice little pump up of his shoe collection at halftime of the game? What? Gary, nine and a half. Can you give us an insight into this? I mean, I'm sitting at home, uh, and I and I thought he's I'm, not gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to lie. I've stolen a lot of Nikes off Gary over the time, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really complain too much. But he's sitting. Any woman oh. would be proud of his shoe collection. Like, I mean, it's ridiculous. You, I mean, you love your Jordans and your sneakers and everything like that. I do. Yeah, his is he's his next level. A one, I mean, isn't it? He's got some pretty. Impressive Air Jordans and some nice signed wow. ones from some pretty high people in high places over in America. Um, so he, he's a man, but I, I, I used to love when he used to get those boxes. I mean, Ian Burns, he used to just run over there quickly before he came out and just open up the box and just see the, the Air Jordan logo and just steal them. Cause, and Same I'm, and size feet? No, nah, yeah. about two sizes too big for me, but I still wore them. <laughs> I've actually still got half a pair anyway. So, um, But yeah, that was a quite a, a, an impressive collection. Oh, well, well what Little a start. Uh, next week, or this week, now actually we're recording this on a Wednesday. It's tomorrow night. Yeah. It comes around quickly. The Brisbane Lions at the SCG. No team playing in their home state this weekend. The Cats have packed their bags. They're playing against the best, right now, best team in the competition, the Brisbane Lions. Well, yeah, they, they, I think they made that point against Port Adelaide on the weekend. And, yeah, they seem to be the most informed team right now. And, and i am put it out there, nearly the best player, the two best players in the competition close. Who? Neil, Neil, Neil and Cameron. And Cameron. Oh, Charlie, yeah. Charles. Oh, Charlie. Oh, who's oh, going to play on Charles? Charles. <laughs> good the luck. The shark? Whoever's got some good hamstrings. Shark's got the... The shark gets the job, the shark doesn't he? Gets the yeah, job. give it to the shark. You need to play someone like... It's going to be Ed, quick enough. Some of the best results against Eddie in his prime was a taller a, a player. Taller player. Yeah. Ben yep. Stratton actually had not a bad record on Eddie Betts because he could play tall but also play small. I feel the same with Charlie Cameron because if he doesn't get you on the ground, he'll sit on your head and yep. take contested marks. So... Mark the Sharks probably the man. I think he's a he's a very good matchup. I think just the, his impact on a game. I mean, hopefully, hopefully Scotty uh, doesn't. Um, <laughs> he did concede oh, in his yeah. press conference during uh, the week. Yeah, was it concede? I, I, I thought that was a very. What did he say? I did see. Him. I was wrong. Oh no! I, I think he said um, he wouldn't. He's he a very good player and a very influential player, <laughs> but he's not the only one. Okay. Didn't yes. I? Don't think he referred. I back think. To I last think. Year. I think if I was. Player knowing Scotty, that's him saying sorry, <laughs> <laughs> and I stuffed up. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, who are possibly? I mean, Jed Buse is the other one to maybe get the job on him. Well, yeah. He, who who are the other ins and outs? Anyone else? Well, we think Tom Stewart still weeks away. He's still out. Weeks. Well, why, why why aren't we being told exactly what's going on? Like he's obviously had an operation. But I don't know why we're playing games and Tommy Stewart. Yeah, with. They're not giving an actual uh-huh. update on how long it is. or well, I would have thought he's out for a few more weeks. I would have thought he would have he's been out not for the, a No, the questions will be, like we mentioned Gaz, do you – like you've got to manage a Gaz and, you know, Harry Taylor, people like that. So that, that will be in vogue because it's a five-day break. So maybe Gaz doesn't play. We've got – you know, we're waiting for Jordan Clark to reappear. He, Chuka, comes, he comes back. He comes back. Sure. Chuka was mentioned. I saw his name in the paper. Simon Lloyd mentioned him. I nearly drove off the road. It was fantastic for you. I'm not going to get my hopes up until he is listed. And then when he is listed, I will get very, very excited. Jordan Clark, you're saying back. Well. I hope so. Young, fast. We're playing against a young, very quick team in Brisbane. They move the ball extremely fast, especially off half back. Um, we, we, need, we need to be able to try to keep up with these guys because it's, you know, obviously playing uh, Gold Coast down here on the weekend, I mean, we played this game. It was, 
practice over really extremely well. So, but going to Sydney um, against a fast young team, I mean, we need to be able to keep up with them. You mentioned Gaz. Yep. Gaz might have a rest. Also, yeah. he he's gone away with the group. Yes. Um, but the club has said, and, and quite rightly said, any time Gary wants to come back, he certainly can because of the um, the news that he shared with uh, the the footballing public. Um, him and Jordan. A rare degenerative disease for little Levi. Um, so Gary's obviously going to weigh up how he can still play football and still contribute to the team, but obviously with his number one focus, quite rightly, on um, on Jordan and Levi and making sure that he can be supportive there. So the club completely open to the fact that Gary may just at some stage want to head back to Geelong and, um, and do the right thing. And we do wish Gary and Jordan and Levi all the very best. That was... Um, we, I, I don't know any more than uh, what Gary posted, but obviously something that you don't want to happen to anyone and any yep. any family. So our thoughts are certainly with Gaz and Jordan. Um, so it, it may be a case of manage Gary's yep. body, but also if Gaz doesn't want to be there, it's completely understandable that he might miss a few games and, and come home and be with his family. I think it, it. I think it also shows. You know, he played you 350th. It's a big. It's a big milestone. Bloody yep. big milestone, and to be able to come out and then and then. Just tell people what's going on, so that people realise that it's more than just a game. And uh, knowing Gary, family's always been number one for him. So, yeah, all our best wishes are for the Ablett family and Jordy. Absolutely. Now, tagging Cameron, that's your forte. I think I know we don't like to, and we play you know you one on one all this, but Lockie Neal, tag him. He's winning the Brownlow by the length of the straight now that Matt Rowe's not involved. <laughs> Surely you put time in. And don't say, oh, put time at stoppage, then run off. I don't like that. I want Cameron Ling-style time. Who? Well, that's why I, I'm asking. I mean, Guthrie gets pointed in his way a bit. Is there anyone else? We Men and Gola was doing a little bit of that early, but now he's getting his own footy a lot. And Just quickly, we're, we're going to take a break in a second. My only thing to finish Give this me a name. is... No. And don't say, oh, the modern football... The modern football needs you. Hang on, hang on. No, we, don't need, I, we don't need linging. I, <laughs> I agree strongly that you should play a tag if you have the right person who plays the right way. You can't have somebody who's just going to be 100% negative and locked down and not oh, touch the football. They don't not exist involved. now because they don't have the right mentality. They're, they're too much offensive taggers now. Yeah, okay, but Jack Steele against Paddy Cripps Jack on the Steele's other night worked perfectly. found the balance perfectly. Yeah, exactly. So if you've got a player like that who can play well, on Who a, on do a we have on our list? Uh, we don't have one in the team that played on the weekend. Trouble. So unless you've got the right person, you don't do it. Uh, we've got to take a break. Zach Tui's coming up in just a second. Before we do, digital is in Deakin University's DNA with 40 years of experience in distance and online learning. Discover why they're the number one Australian public university for overall educational experience. Premium, proven, loved. Study online at Deakin. The great Reggie's up next. Welcome back. Great to have you with us on to the final bell. Brought to you by Panther Tyres, as promised. The man who, well, formerly was part of this team, Scotland, wow. and then dumped us for um, bigger and better things. Zach Tui, Reggie, great to see you and talk to you and hear from you. Hello, Cameron. It's <laughs> nice to see the other two. <laughs> Disappointed to see you again. I, I, <laughs> I got the email <laughs> saying that uh, Zach was our um, Zach was our guest, and I thought I didn't realise we were doing a VFL segment again and um, getting oh. Zach on board. And uh, oh. <laughs> shot his <laughs> fire, <laughs> big one early. No, no I thought no, your, no. your form was excellent on uh, Saturday, Reg. I was disappointed I was, when I heard that you were going to be our guest. I was hoping you'd have a shocker and we could just hang it on you, but you played too well, mate. So well done on the weekend. Thank you, mate. Hey, I'll tell you what I did see on the weekend, Lingy. It was one of your early games. It was, I think it was the top 10 worst misses in AFL history. <laughs> Can you remember this? Running into an open goal and kicking it out in the pool? Uh, yes, my second game of AFL football. Was it? Jeez, a long way back from there. You've done well. <laughs> <laughs> Reg, it took a long time for Geelong fans to forgive me of that one, Reggie. <laughs> Speaking of goals, you're very keen at the moment, aren't you? You're, you're having lots of, <laughs> lots of goes at <laughs> Jesus. You can't quite yeah, hit nah. one right. Nah, nah. I tell you what, I had that first shot <laughs> in the last quarter against Gold Coast, and honestly, when I when I took the pill, there was grip all, all over it. <laughs> now nah, that's not an excuse. I'm just saying it, it, I dropped it funny because somebody rubbed grip all over it. <laughs> yeah, the second one, 
Yeah, Zach Miner probably could have passed it. <laughs> <laughs> I pass it. Passing's overrated. It got me nowhere. Now, yeah. <laughs> where do we find you? You're in Sydney. What hub life? Or are you allowed out? What What's the rules and regulations, Rich? It's not too bad right here. So we can we can grab a coffee and um, there's a pack across the road that we were allowed to do. I have a 10 minute stroll in to do our recovery. Um, but that's about the extent of it. And I think once we get over to Perth, it's pretty much in the hotel and nothing else. So it's you, um, not, not the most exciting time for us. Are you rooming with anyone or have you got a bit of your own space? You'd, ha- you'd hate nah. to have a horrible room, mate. Nah, nah, we're rooming by ourselves. Um, it's going to be a testing enough time as it is. I'm not sure I need to be sharing with Stanley or someone. <laughs> who's, who, who's footing the bill for the, the movies? Because obviously there's not going to be a lot of spare time. What are you, who's going to be? Uh, what have you watched so far? Yeah, well, I'm not a big Netflixer, but um, I'm doing my best to, to try and get into it and find something I can watch. So if there's any suggestions, feel free to send them through. Um, but there's golf. Uh, there's a set of golf clubs downstairs, so we're chipping around our function room and table tennis tables and um, plenty of makeshift games um, being invented at the minute. And what's the plan? So I've clearly played tomorrow night. You've got you to tick that one off and uh, against a very good team. We'll get to that in two seconds. Do you fly straight out after that to Perth? No, I, I don't think we fly out till Saturday. Um, I think we're sharing the flight with Collingwood, I think. Oh, that's always um, fun, seeing opposition players. Yeah. yeah, we flew up at Melbourne, so that was interesting. Um, <laughs> but now we don't fly until Saturday, which is quite good. It gives us a couple of days for it to recover before we kind of get stuck in a hotel for three or four weeks. Um, so that's not too bad, but you know, it's going to be some strange. What have you done with the family, Rich? Yeah, so obviously my little fella's still in school, so um, the options come up was not really on the cards for us. Um but she's up in Bendigo with her family at the moment because um, it's school holidays and then um, hopefully they'll come down with her because she obviously doesn't want to be in the house by herself. So you, d- you did remember to tell her you were leaving. You didn't just pack your bags that quickly and get out of there that it just left the family well, I told behind. Her, I told her I was leaving. I'm not sure I mentioned the time frame. <laughs> <laughs> I think she is expecting me back Friday night, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> just a text after the game, she'll understand. <laughs> I'll you, tell her Scotty arranged it last minute <laughs> blame him. You do have to go to a meeting in just a second Before you do one question about tomorrow night We were discussing who gets Charlie Cameron You, don't, you definitely wouldn't be going on him would you, you put You're too up. smart for that <laughs> I've, wa- I've washed my hands of those jobs Cameron <laughs> <laughs> I am skunking around the back of stoppages these days And I love it uh, Does your no, Irish mate get the job? The shark. Yeah Shaq played on on the weekend and, and did a great job. Um, obviously, busy has got history on him as well. I'm not sure exactly, but I can categorically tell you I won't be going near him. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we, we better let you go, Reggie. i just look at the, uh, the, the time there. We are recording this. It's a couple of minutes to 10. Your meeting's at 10 o'clock, so get down there. Enjoy isolation life. Have a terrific yeah. win, hopefully, tomorrow night, and then enjoy the trip to Perth. Oh, I'll try my best to enjoy it. Sorry, it couldn't be longer, Cameron. I know you love my company. <laughs> <laughs> Always a pleasure. Thank you very much, Reggie. We uh, Hopefully, Reggie will go all right on uh, tomorrow night's game. Uh, what a good man he is for joining us. He does have to run off very quickly to a team meeting, so we will let him go. Um, all jokes aside, he's playing some good footy. You can see when... Body's right, and uh, he's obviously done the oh, full yeah. preseason and everything like that. Last year, well, he's playing a different the- role. He's he's not f- always defence. I don't know what it is, but he seems to float a lot. <laughs> I don't know what it is. What are you, well, you know what I mean? What, what are you, are you saying? <laughs> what saying are you getting at? Never defence. No, well, he's just floating around the four line a lot. More midfield. You he's do not- need one. You know, one backman who's sort of not accountable for anything. Well, yeah, yeah Reginald, you kind of, I think you kind of need that person. There's a couple of teams in the AFL who have multiple. Who have multiple. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God oh. we're not one of them. There's no way Scarlo will let, allow that to happen. Oh, That's for damn dear. sure. It, it is. It, it's obscene across the comp with some teams. You're not happy, are you? Well, about no, the Melbourne Football Club. <laughs> oh, no, well, they just can't kick. That's a they cannot a kick the football. No, you know what? See what I, happens when they get rid of Macca? I'll, yeah. <laughs> cool. I'll lay off Melbourne. I'll turn the kicking skills oh. onto. I joyfully tuned into Fremantle versus the Adelaide Crows. Oh, mm. Adelaide. Are they still in the competition? That game was like a subpar under 18 game. There's a few issues there. That, 
They couldn't hit a kick 15 metres away with no one around with zero pressure. The wise old recruiter here who will have a statue once told me they need to be able to kick and be of good character, which I don't know how you, you got through the doors, Stacey, but other than that... I could kick, I just couldn't kick over 15 <laughs> metres. <laughs> but he, that was his kick, and it makes sense. I mean, You'd nail you can't lace out, though, over 15. Oh, over yeah. 15, I was dead eye. <laughs> you can't recruit guys in and make them into a good kick, in my opinion. No, they well, can improve a little bit, but they're not going to become... You've got to be able to win the footy, number one. Correct. You've got to be able to absolutely in a contest, do all that sort of thing. But secondly... That no, can be trained to a degree. There's no point winning the footy if you're just going to give it back. straight back to the opposition. Mm-hmm. And the difference between being an okay kick and a good kick is crucial. Because yeah. an okay kick still gets it. Like, for me, it stokes you Still gets it to Stokesy, but an okay kick makes him stop, wait, yeah, yeah. doesn't flow. Miss a good moment. kick puts it just to the side where Stokes, you can move on to it. Everybody else makes great decisions from it. Away we go. Like the flying. great Robert De Niro said, or Al Pacino, <laughs> the inches we need are everywhere. And the kicks, if you can't put them into the right places, if you can't put your teammate onto the ball, yeah. you're going to suffer. Agreed. It was Al Pacino. Al Pacino. So. Sorry, <laughs> Robert, sorry, Robert De Niro. <laughs> any given Sunday there. I like it. Uh, we will take another break. Um, I'm going to get to your questions next. Uh, we've got a couple of nice curly ones. Hopefully a couple coming your way, Scotty. Listeners out there, please, we love the questions, and Stokes and I really do love answering the questions. The engagement's fantastic. But feel free to fire anything you like about Scotty Gullen. Oh, no, no. He is privy... Don't mention the best players. ...to some of the most inner sanctum stuff going on in the media world. The clashes, Ooh. who likes who... Who's punched on before at little functions? It's mainly Channel 7, all the stuff <laughs> I get. It's <laughs> not a happy camp at Channel 7. Fire questions at Scotland, please. We'll be back in a second. Welcome back. It's great to have you with us. We're just talking a little bit of American sport. Can we get to that in a second? We're going to just hold on to it? Hold on to it. Oh. <laughs> My home boy. <laughs> Give us a bloody loan. Oh, wouldn't that be a nice little contract? Uh, bef- just hold on to that thought, though. Uh, because it's important to stay healthy while staying at home. That's why GMHBA have partnered with Keezer. If you're a GMHBA member with extras cover, you can access telehealth or in-centre physio from the team at Keezer with no out-of-pocket expenses up to your annual limits until September 30. Waiting periods and sublimits apply. Search GMHBA Keezer for details and stay healthier at home. Speaking of members, just for any of our listeners from Western Australia, uh, the game, so obviously not this week, next week, Thursday night, the Cats taking on the Pies over there in Perth. The best access to tickets, the best idea, is to become a Geelong member because there will be a pre-sale for Cats and Pies members before the tickets go on sale to the public. They're going to allow 30,000 into Perth Stadium, a chance oh, to watch live be. footy and watch your beloved Cats play. So sign up, become a member, and you can have access to the pre-sale tickets. Membership.geelongcats.com.au if you would like to do that. That's the best way to do it. Uh, Going to get to your questions, but do you want to talk, Patrick Mahomes? Was it $500 million It's over a half over, a billion. Over 10 years. Biggest sports contract ever. Quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, Super Bowl winning, MVP, not last year, the year before. And Should have been last year. Jerry Maguire, our favourite movie. It's the real life Jerry Maguire. That it was based who on. Did, yeah, yeah, who so did not, it, the so agent. Not, so not Tom Cruise. No, not Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah. but his character was based on this guy, 71-year-old. I forgot his name now. Terrible. But he did the deal. $500 million. That's the whole AFL loan, wasn't it, that we got to save our <laughs> sport. <laughs> true. <laughs> That, that is true. Um, compared to Cam Newton, who's signed with our beloved Pats. Yeah. Doing it for the love. Scotty, he's on he's seven and a half it, million potential. But he's doing it for respect. How much, Absolutely. How much guaranteed? Only about 800 grand. I thought it was only 800, yeah. You'd be lucky to put food on the table. <laughs> that's, only one, that's only one payment for his mortgage, I would have thought. <laughs> I, don't, I don't reckon he's struggling too much. But no, he's earned 120 million over his eight years already. Will the NBA get a... Restart. We love yeah, our no. American sports. Stokes was telling me off the break. I think they're a couple of weeks from getting into Disney World. Oh, Disney World. Can you imagine being a real young player going into Disney World <laughs> and being stuck there with LeBron James and some of the superstars oh. of the NBA? I don't think they'll be doing too much socialising, but... I wonder if the rides are still operating for them. Do they get some <laughs> free rides? In, in Orlando, it's going to be... In Orlando. The mini- worst place in America, isn't it? <laughs> at, at the moment for coronavirus. Oh, is it? I think so, oh. Orlando. So no, it's great. everywhere. It's like coming to Melbourne. 
All, all I hope <laughs> is... Stay away from Geelong too, you people in Melbourne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't we, want you. <laughs> we love all our listeners in Melbourne. But that's uh, we love you. <laughs> all I care... I, I want the NBA to get a restart. I like, I like basketball, but I love NFL. I need the NFL to start on time and I need my fantasy competition with my former teammates <laughs> and uh, former coaches and all that. That, that gets me through. Those, I uh, think they still think they're okay, don't they? The NFL? They've got too much money. They'll make it happen. They'll make, They'll it, make happen. it happen. All right, let's get to your questions. Thank you for those who've sent it in. This is from Kelvin. Do you think Harry Taylor should publish his notes after he has retired? So Harry Taylor makes copious notes uh, during every week after most training sessions, certainly after every game, leading into games, all of that. It would be fascinating to read the rambling thoughts of <laughs> Harold Taylor. <laughs> um, should he publish it? Will he publish them? Uh, no. no. Knowing Harry, he's not that type of bloke. But he could do like maybe a sit down with a night with Harry with a cognac <laughs> in one hand and a cigar on the other, if I know Harry as well as I do. Um, but to be honest, he's a very um, intelligent man, but... Uh, Backline players, well, like, really, what are they going to talk about? Like, <laughs> punching a ball, spoiling ball, it? Like, ball really, comes in, punch it. Punch it. Yeah, I don't see <laughs> what's so interesting about that. But, no, <laughs> Harry's a fascinating man, and, and the way he sees football would be an, a beautiful insight, actually, in how he sees it. It well, would. The only other person I know who had kept notes like that was Tom Harley. He really? used to have exercise books full of notes. I don't know if he did it right at the end of his career, but certainly the, his early and middle part mm. of his career, he used to make coaches' well, would, notes. Harold's entry be for put ham in sock and give it to opposition player. Yeah, that that that'd be an interesting little addition to his notes. Still one of the weirder <laughs> How things. How come you've never written a book, Cameron? Uh, I was oh, approached yeah. to write a book we by discussed this, didn't we, Cameron? To be involved with one of the great writers of football in uh, in my generation, Scott Gallen, and I declined because. I respect. I actually respected you for this. The yeah, I respected you. <laughs> I'd like to hear this. Not many things. No, I said what what I would be prepared to put in there would be incredibly boring and not a great read. The th- bits that would have made it a fairly exciting read and worth buying, I wasn't prepared to disclose hmm. because I believe some things should remain behind. These four very walls. Uh, I like the way you think, Cameron. Yeah. Mind you, for not throwing me out of the bus. <laughs> mind you, if uh, if the um, entire AFL continues to move away from Victoria and I need some money, Scotty, <laughs> can we re- revisit that at some stage? <laughs> I'd quickly get onto that, Cameron. <laughs> uh, thank you, Calvin. We have no idea what goes through the mind of Harry Taylor, but um, it would be fascinating. Tristan asked this question. Uh, what did Sam Menegola do during the break? He has come back playing like he did in 2016. Tristan, it has been fascinating to see the players who've come back really prepared and in great nick for the restart of the season. Uh, Sam Menegola is certainly well, someone... Joel he Selwood's was injured over... Some, like he had a delayed pre-season. He did. So I think the break definitely helped him. Definitely helped him to rest up, but he oh, clearly well, did everything right. I mean, where, look at his Scott Pendlebury as well. I know I've spoken about this... You come back, Charlie Dixon, just come back in amazing mm. condition and actually t- made advancements yep. um, in their body and in their, um, in their fitness. Others haven't quite so much. <laughs> um, well, wearing the long sleeves last week was smart because you couldn't, you kept having the ball. It's like, oh, that's Mangala. Yeah, that's a you good point. You kept catching your eye. 27 looks always looks good getting the ball too. <laughs> um, Sam's a, he's an prof- absolute professional. I mean, he's... Um, Running ability at training is is uh, is as good as I've seen, um, and he loves his bike riding. So Run, running was he'd be pro- second only to Blitz or Myers is in there. Yeah, those three would be That's pretty true. close. But Menegola, I think in the fifteen minute run, I think nearly got him. I think last time Blitz. Wow. I think, and I hurt Blitz, and then he came back <laughs> and um, knowing Blitz, he was very competitive. And the next one, he I think he. Reminded everyone who's the boss. <laughs> it is unlike like Blitz had to put on ten or twelve kilos to, yeah. to play AFL, which yep. impacts your running ability a, a little 15 bit. Fifteen minute run test. Imagine us back there. Oh, fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, minutes a long time. Oh, I would have liked, that. Would have been right in my wheelhouse. Me, me and Ma- me and Mac did it. Oh, and Corey and right and Scala does. Scala just trotted around. But the fifteen minutes, it, it's a bloody long time. You would have broken them early, Cameron. Gone oh, hard. No, yeah. Stevie, Stevie was the one who liked to try and break people, <laughs> but he ended up breaking himself the majority of the time. So. In whatever he did. <laughs> uh, Brad asks, what do we do about Brisbane's small, quick forward line? Well, we were discussing before the matchup of Charlie Cameron, but it's not just Charlie Cameron. Lincoln. Oh, yeah, Link. Mm. Our boy. 
I'm so I'm so happy to watch him play yeah, at the moment. Yep. To, he is one of the most nicest kids you ever come across in football when he came in, in the most respectful. And to see that he just I don't think it was anything that we did. We, we gave him the best opportunity and obviously he's gone up there, it's a fresh start and it's paid dividends for Brisbane. But watching him play and the smiles that, that he's out there and how happy he is, I mean, it's great to see uh, the young man just playing footy but playing good footy. And Buse and, footy. Buse and O'Connor seem most likely for Cameron McCarthy type matchups. They're the best suited. It's not just those quick midfield um, forwards though. Their mids kick mm. goals. McCluggage yep. is a good player. Well, McCluggage, he, <laughs> he could have kicked six the other week. Yeah, yeah, Neil, Neil, Neil six six behind. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got um, Jared Ra- uh, so Rayner, like yeah, which is going to be a good match yeah. f- matchup for our boy Zaki. Two oh, e. I he mean, don't want to play on him either. Reg two, v two, Rayner, <laughs> two two bucket bums. <laughs> Playing against each other would be great to watch. Uh, yeah, you're right. Rainer's, Rainer's, you can see him just each preseason, each training session. He hasn't game. done it yet. No, he hasn't done it yet. He, you, you're talking about Rao after three games calling him superstar and then you're saying Rainer. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying Rao's already further advanced than Rainer. No, but he, he's getting conditioning. God, they're, they're a high tuck, he's, he's already there. Oh. You're a high tuck, I'll tuck you in a second. <laughs> uh, Jack asks the question, if Jenkins comes into the team, whose spot does he take? He doesn't come in this week. No. Um, you can't play him, Sav, and Tomahawk. And you just can't. Yeah. I would say right now, uh, let's leave injuries out of it for a second. Fort's got the ruck spot for at least another... At least one more week. Well, <laughs> but at least another, <laughs> another few weeks. I think he's done enough to warrant a, a real is. look at him at senior level. Yep. Hawk and Sav are the two key forwards, with Sav being able to go in the ruck. And Sav actually responds when, he, when he's well held as a forward. If he has a run around for a little bit, he goes back to the forward line better equipped. He, yep, he just, I agree with that. He thrives on it. And then the rest, so Gary Rowan, I suppose you'd call your, your mid-size forward, you know, your marking option type yep. one. And then the rest of the little fellas... Yeah, Jenkins, the mix is right. Jenkins doesn't fit into that. No, so unless no. there's an injury, Jenkins doesn't play. I know they're, they're going to manage players and everything like yep. this, rest and all that, but he doesn't fit in the best 22 yet. No, I agree with that, Cameron. Scott? Scott, what do you Totally reckon? agree with that. He's and not, to be he's fair... He went into Brownlow from the way you carry He was ball. told when he came here that, you know, this is the scenario. So it's not anything he wasn't told. So you've only got to play three good games and you get called a superstar. Yes. Superstar. That makes me and you superstars. I'm sure throughout our entire well, careers we played I think, three I good games. I think I can find three games I played Is Cam Rayner, has he fulfilled, is he a very good player at AFL level yet? Not, not yet. That's all I'm but saying. People, hang on a sec. You want yeah, yeah. everyone to develop at the rate of Judd, Selwood no, and Rao. No, but when there are freaks, you acknowledge them and Rao's a freak. Yeah, a freak and, and a young star. Yes. Certainly. Young, Super, young, young superstar. Star. Is superstar. Superstar is yes. Nat Fife. It's Nath Fife. <laughs> champion. Oh, okay. Champion, I didn't is, say Gar- champion. is Gary Ablett. Did you, I say you champion? You guys in the media and, and you're, That's all, you're all just... No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> you're all the same. You anoint these players as absolute superstars. And they've, yeah, superstar. He's going to be a superstar. But not just yet. <laughs> i tell you, who else is a young star? Oh, oh. He's Big Ben King. Oh, oh yeah. He moves. Both and of them Maxi have got King, yeah. serious... No wonder why... Got, Gold Coast are going to be bloody good soon. Oh, yeah. give, give them two more years. Well coached. Ooh. I want to see. I reckon you'll get this right. Out of all those Gold Coast young young stars, who do you reckon my favourite out of all of them is? Uh, Don't think obvious. Don't think Raoul. Berry, one of the berries. No. No. Oh, Gold, Gold Coast. Coast. Sorry, Gold Coast. I was going Brisbane. Gold Coast. Uh, little, there's super a skillful, finds the footy in a contest, niggly little... Miller. No, no I do old. like Miller. No, no, go younger. I'll go f- small forward at the moment, small but we'll play forward. midfield. Benny? Benny Ainsworth. Ainsworth oh. yeah. He just took it up to the Geelong boys and was not going to back down. It was Selwood, it was anyone. Yeah. He was throwing them on the ground. And, but then he'd back it up with brilliant skill. I, I had him in the academy for a year and he's a little smarter. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love it because you need to be. I mean, to be a player his size in this, ga- in this game, you've got to yeah. be. You, you, and you've got to just pretend like you're not, you've got no fear because people walk all over you. When you're our height, sorry, Benny, <laughs> you, you've just got to have an edge to him. And he does. He's got an edge. Yeah. Um, and you know what? The best player is not... Hasn't even been cited yet. Isaac Rankin, when he comes yeah. onto the scene, yeah. good Number luck. Number three pick. Good luck. Are they talking? He might make his debut yeah, this, this week. week. Yeah, I think he's he's, he, he's uh, When I went through the academy with those 
players in that age bracket, he was the best by far. He was just a superstar. Wow. Now, I'm excited by it because uh, I, I want them to succeed up there. Absolutely. But more importantly, I love the way they play. And Brisbane are doing it. I don't know. I'm repeating myself every chance I get here. Brisbane are doing it. Port Adelaide are doing it. St Kilda are doing it. And the Gold Coast Suns are. They're playing a style of football that is winning games, is proving to be successful early on in the season. Let's see how it unfolds. But it's bloody attractive to watch as well. So all this doom and gloom about rubbish footy, let's take a little leaf out of those teams. And they're doing it with a smile. Yes. That's what I love. I love watching people and teams play footy, but love being out there. And watching even Gold Coast on the weekend, there was times where we were dominating them in that second half. And to see the, the... them getting around each other and picking, having picking, picking each, each other, other up. up. Yep. I love that. And that's a sign of a good football club. I, I worked on the game Thursday night, St Kilda versus Carlton. We had a little snippet of Brett Ratton's pre-match uh, meeting from the day before at the club. I, I almost wanted to run up and give him a hug. Did oh. you listen to it? It was straight out of everything we got taught. Keep the ball moving. Keep it in motion. If you stop, you are done. Keep it going. See an option. Give it. Hand or foot. Doesn't matter. <laughs> this is gold. And then this they went out revolution. and played and the ball was bang, bang, bang down the ground. And it wasn't always perfect. And sometimes it was actually the, the lateral switch one, but it was done quickly and yep. with an intent to go forward. He's just got written all over that you just love to play for him. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. He just seems like a very good man. Yeah. No, nah, brilliant. And they're going to be in Noosa for a month. I could live with that. <laughs> <laughs> How could good's live. that wrought? Oh, uh, they might finish the boss though. of the AFL, Barracks St Gilda. His best mates, their footy boss. Conspiracy theorists. We'll have the only problem is they've got to get a bus a couple of hours each week to play, oh, but I think they can deal with I that. I put up. <laughs> How good are these? Well, let, street. Anyway, let, let's I hope digress. we see some of the most exciting footy tomorrow night. I think quarters one, three, and four showed the cats when they are at their best. It is dynamic, bold ball movement, not slow, stagnant ball movement. The Brisbane Lions certainly play that way. So tomorrow night is going to be a fascinating matchup at the SCG 740. Just a reminder, anyone for the following following week, the Thursday night, if you want tickets, be part of the 30,000 that can go and watch the Cats play the Pies. Become a member, membership.geelongcats.com.au. You'll get an option to jump on the pre-sale for Cats and Pies members. Best way to do it. We will be back again next week. I don't know if we'll have Diggsy. We're going to keep on trying. He's well, going the to marriage could be off. Yeah, well, his wedding's uh, probably next week, so we no chance <laughs> next be. week. Yeah, we're waiting for that... Uh the actual invite for the wedding, Digsy, but uh, obviously, <laughs> Come on, Digsy. Obviously, obviously he's got lost in the mail. We'll, uh, we'll try and get one of the players on, uh, potentially from Perth, hear about how the Perth hub is travelling. We will be back next week. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you, Stokes. Scotty, stay at Geelong. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I will. I don't like leaving my house. And big <laughs> thanks to Panther Tyres for all their support. We'll be back next week.